Hi, my name's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. I have noticed that I've had a few new subscribers recently, so it's lovely to have you here. Um, this is the end of the year book tag. So I was uh, tagged by Nikki over at Red Dot Reads. I'll link Nikki's channel down below. Please do check her out if you haven't already done so. The original tag was created by Ariel Bissett. Um, so I had been planning on filming a video actually about my reading plans for the rest of the year. So it makes sense to do it as part of this tag. The first question, are there any books you've started this year that you still need to finish? No, because I only, I usually only read one book at a time. It's unusual for me to read more than one at a time. I only do that if I'm reading um, non-fiction or short stories. Um, so no, nothing I need to finish before the end of the year. Question two, do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? So not necessarily. But I did read last week The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield, which was a reread for me. And it felt like this was the right time of year to reread this book. It's got quite a gothic feel. It's reasonably lengthy. And um, it's made me think that this time of year is probably a good time to reread some books. I don't do a lot of rereading. Um, and it's something I would like to do more of. Particularly some of my, what I would say are my favourite books, but I might have only read them once each. Um, so I am planning on doing some more rereading, I think, before the end of the year. Um, a couple of books that I, I think I would like to head to before the end of the year. One of them is Jane Eyre um, by Charlotte Bronte, uh, which I read several times as a teenager, but I don't think I've read it since then. Um, so I would like to reread re that this year and the other book I'd like to reread I think is Affinity by Sarah Waters um, I always say Affinity is my favourite Sarah Waters novel um, and actually I think it's probably one of my favourite books of all time but I have only read it once um, I've read all of Sarah Waters books once um, so yeah I think Affinity would be again a good one to read this time of year just like because when you can reread a novel, you can sort of really immerse yourself in the writing and in the story, and it feels like the right time to reread Affinity. Um, question three Is there a new release you're still waiting for? So I don't think there's any new releases that I'm still waiting for, but there are a number of very recent releases which I have either just managed to get from the library or I'm hoping to get very soon from the library. Um, so I'll show you what those are. The first one, let me put those down. First one is Lemon by Kwon Yo Sun. This is a Korean um, novel, which is only very short. It is kind of a crime novel. Um, it, it, we focus on um, a young girl who's been murdered um, and it's the aftermath, as in, I think it's like 20 years on, the aftermath of the effect on the people who've been left behind. Um, so that's one that I've been looking forward to. Also, Case Study by Graham McRae Burnett. I read his Bloody Project, I think, earlier this earlier this year, which I liked. Um, so this is his new, lo new novel. Um, I'll read you what it says. London, 1965. An unworldly young woman believes that a charismatic psychotherapist has driven her sister to suicide. Intent on confirming her suspicions, she assumes a false identity and presents herself to him as a client, recording her experiences in a series of notebooks. But she soon finds herself drawn into a world in which she can no longer be certain of anything, even her own character. Um, so that looks good. One that I've just picked up today from the library and I'm very much looking forward to it, is Manifesto by Bernadine Evaristo. So this is um, Bernadine's memoir. Um, obviously Bernadine won the Booker Prize two years ago and I think this book talks about how the impact that's had, had on her and how you know she's been a, a writer for I don't know 40 years or something but it's only since winning the Booker Prize that she's really that people she's become a household name almost um so i'm very much looking to reading that and then one more library book which i haven't got yet um but i am first in the queue is uh, the fell by sarah moss so i'm looking forward to reading that that one is set in the pandemic and i believe it follows a woman who is 
meant to be isolating. I think she's in quite a remote location and um, she's meant to be isolating but she decides to go out for a walk one day and I think she gets injured or lost or something happens. Um, I like Sarah Moss. I've only read, I read Summer Water earlier this year and I like that a lot and I read Ghost Wall, Ghost Wall as well which again I liked a lot and I think next year I'm going to hopefully get to more of Sarah Moss's backlist. Okay, question four. What are three books you want to read before the end of the year? So, there are three books here that I do want to read before the end of the year. And these are three books which I, I've wanted to read for a while. I've picked up these copies secondhand um, because my library doesn't have them. Um, but I've had these for several months now. I've just not got around to them and I don't know why. But I really do want to read these before the end of the year. The first one is The Henna Wars. This is by Adiba Jaigidar. And this is a YA, I don't know if it's middle grade or YA, um, novel about a young girl coming out to her family. Um, and I've heard really good things about this, so I'm looking forward to reading this. The next one is Stay With Me by Ayubami Adebayo. Um, I don't really know too much about what this is about, but it's set in Nigeria and I believe it follows, I think, a couple. Um... So it says it's about the fragility of married love, the undoing of family, the power of grief and the all-consuming bonds of motherhood. I th the way I've heard people talk about this makes me sound like it's got some sort of mystery or, or, or intrigue going on in there. So I'm keen to read that one as well before the end of the year. And then finally, Fresh Water by Quakey Emeze. I'm surprised I've not read this yet, actually. I read, I've read two of Emeze's novels this year. I've read The Death of Eva Koji which is my favourite book of the year. And I read Pet as well, which I liked a lot. This is um, Emezi's debut novel, um, which I want to read this year because Emezi has three books coming out next year. So I definitely want to get this read. Um, and then actually, there are three more, or more books that I would like to read before the end of the year, only because they are Christmas themed. Um, so it would make sense to read them in December. Um, so the first one, this is a, um, a recent release actually, Stay Another Day by Juno Dawson. This I believe is a YA book. I've read, I think I tend to prefer Juno's non-fiction to her fiction. She writes a lot about uh, gender in her non-fiction. Um, but this sounds good. Um, as it says at the back, with only four sleeps till Christmas, three secretive siblings, two hot house guests and one juicy secret this christmas there will be some big surprises under the tree so that sounds like fun and also it is named after a great e17 song e17 were my favorite boy band growing up um the next christmasy book i've got is the cat of yule cottage by lily haywood i picked this up last month from a charity shop down the road purely because it's Christmassy and there's a cat on the cover so I'd like to read that in December and then finally you've got some short stories this is the mistletoe murder and other stories by PD, PD James um this is only a very slim book there's only four stories in here all about Christmas and murder okay that's that one question five is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year I think it's unlikely although I did read a book two or three weeks ago which came very close to becoming my book of the year and that was A Passage North by Anouk Arun Pragasam but my favourite book of the year is The Death of Eva Koji by Kweki Mezzi and I just because of how much I love that book I find it hard to imagine reading another book before the end of the year that will topple that from its number one spot because it's not just my favorite book of the year it, it is definitely up there as one of my favorite books of all time i would say but you never know you never know um question six have you already started making reading plans for next year so yes i have i don't tend to plan my reading all that much anyway um what I read at any given time is largely dictated by the library holds that come in on any week. Um, but I've had some mm, sort of general thoughts about some 
types of reading that I'd like to do a bit more of next year. And the first one is rereading. And that's something I want to do more of actually towards the end of this year. Because um, I don't make time for that normally. Um, the second one is reading some longer books, which I have wanted to get to for a while, but still have not got to. And the prime example of this is uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell by Susanna Clark because I read Piranesi at the end of last year and loved it and then thought to myself I need to head back and read her other novel and I still haven't and I'm like we're like a year down the line and I still haven't read that book and I don't know why it is a long book I think it's at like 900 pages or something it's a very long book um so yeah one of my plans for next year is there is, there's a number of longer books that i've wanted to get to for a while that i do want to make time for next year and the third sort of general plan is i'm thinking i'd like to try some more classics now i'm not a big classics reader and i'm probably never going to be a big classics reader and that's okay um but i think particularly since watching booktube because i only discovered booktube at the end of last year um and hearing people talk about different classic authors and different classic novels that they like makes me want to try more out. Um, so, for example, I read A Picture of Dorian Gray last year or the year before, loved it. Um, I read Frankenstein this year, loved it. Um, so there's a number of classic novels and classic authors that I would like to <clears throat> try out next year. Um, and then in terms of specific books that I'm looking forward to next year. There's two new releases in January, which I um, have already ordered from the library. First in the queue again. Um, and the first is Hanya Yanagahara's new novel, To Paradise. Um, so early this year, I read The People in the Trees. I wasn't so keen on. And then I read A Little Life, which I liked an awful lot. So, um, so yeah, I was stalking the, uh, the library catalogue to see when they would have that her new book on order um so i've reserved that um mainly because well i'm keen to read it anyway but i feel like a lot of books she was going to be talking about that book in january so i may as well get in on the act um and the other book i have ordered as well is the new sophie hannah novel it's called i think the couple at the table um and i'm very much looking forward to that because so sophie hannah writes the new Poirot novels she also does standalone crime fiction and she has a crime series and this new novel in January is um, the next in her series. I don't think there's been a new one of those for several years actually but they're my favourite um, of hers so I'm very much looking forward to that. So I think that is the end of the tag. So I'm not going to tag anyone in particular uh, because I feel like a lot of people have already done this tag or have been tagged already um, but if you haven't done it and you'd like to do so then please consider yourself tagged. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you're all well and I will speak to you all again very soon. Bye!